All right, we're on the last section of your book, section 15.6, and this is solubility. I do want to remind you that um, Ks are all the same, so we're going to talk about Ksp. Now, when something um, dissolves, uh, let's say, for example, we have um, calcium uh, fluoride. That's going to dissolve into calcium plus 2 plus... Uh, fluorine ions, that's a negative one, and we're going to have two of them. So, <coughs> excuse me, when you write the uh, solubility constant, you just have to remember that we have only a uh, numerator because the denominator goes with the solid, which we know is basically one. So, just keep that in mind as we go through, and also there are double this, so if you don't know what this is, this is going to be x, because we don't know it, but because this, for every one of these that uh, goes over, we get one of these and then two of those. So this is going to be 2x, but then you also have to square it, and that always kind of confuses people. So when I get to that, just remember that's going to happen. All right, so um, there's a couple things to remember here, and that is uh, the things are in dynamic equilibrium. And so, for example, when you have salt in water, when salt dissolves in water, a le equilibrium occurs. And it turns out that since salt is so soluble, that equilibrium is so far to the right that we don't really worry about it. As some solids dissolve, however, um, if you saturate it, so you're going to have some dissolving and some um, also going in to precipitate. Now, I usually can't see this but it is occurring, and that's in a saturated solution. So everything has a KSP, even salt, but it just takes a lot of salt to do that. All right, and if you look at your textbook, if you look at your notes, let me go back here. If you look at your notes, I uh, have inserted a diagram of that, and you know that it is uh, saturated because there's salt in the bottom, so that's your NaCl. If you add enough, it'll end up in the bottom. But as one of these dissolves, you get one sodium ion and one chlorine ion. And at any given time, this stuff is dissolving, but these guys are precipitating. So there's a diagram in your notes already done for you, so you don't have to write my terrible uh, drawing. But what about if something has low solubility? So it really doesn't like to be in solution. So it's got a KSP that's much lower than one. And so all I have to say is ice, ice, baby. All right, so let's look at a solubility con uh, product for something that's not extremely soluble. So we've got a KSP. We want to know the KSP, and we can actually calculate that if we know the concentration of the ions. So experimentally, you would determine the solubility of an ionic solid, and then you can use that to calculate KSP because you can figure out how many ions are still in solution. And then the solubility of an ionic solid can be calculated if its KSP value is known. So in other words, you can use the concentrations to figure out what KSP is, but if you don't know the concentrations, you can use KSP to figure them out. So you can go either way. So these problems are going to do both. And so I'll probably have to do two lectures because it'll go longer than 10 minutes. But in other words, if you have the KSP, you can figure out the concentrations. And also, if you have the concentrations, you can calculate the KSP. So we can go either way. So we'll start with the first way, and then I'll do a second lecture on the second way so you can take a little break. All right. So um, you need to watch out. Solubility is not the same as the solubility product. Solubility is the concentration of that particular chemical in the solution. And solubility product, KSP, is the equilibrium constant for a situation where you have a solid in solution. Okay, It doesn't change except for if you change the temperature. So we're going to assume everything is at 25 degrees um, Celsius or 298 Kelvin, which is what the tests use, unless you're told otherwise. And the solubility is an equivalent equilibrium position for how much can dissolve. All right, and you need a common ion. If you add a common ion, that's going to affect your solubility just like with acid base. So 
not, it's not exactly called buffering, but it still changes the amount that can dissolve. All right, so let's calculate KSP. We're going to do a couple of examples of this, and then I'll do a second lecture when you're going backwards because that's a little bit more complex when you have a common ion effect. All right, so let's look at this particular uh, reaction. The first thing to note is that we, we know that we have this many uh, ions in solution, and we want to know what the KSP is for that. All right, and um, so... Let's take a look at this problem first. So change uh, to moles and use the equation. So let's do that. All right, so let's uh, calculate the KSP for this. Now this is the tricky bit, so you gotta remember this. Uh, look up the formula. This one's very straightforward, so we're gonna start with an easy one. And the formula for this would be copper, Cu, uh, and, which is plus 1. And then we have bromine, which is minus 1, which means that they have a one-to-one -one relationship. So the equation is uh, Cu, um, Br, will uh, break apart into Cu plus 1 plus uh, Br minus 1. So if we start with um, this, the concentration of each of them, we know that this is x and this is x. So for every one of these, we'll get 1x and 1x because they have an equal relationship. All right, so let's go back and do the math here. So the Ksp is going to be equal to the concentration of the solution and we're going to assume we have one liter. So we can choose whatever size we want and then that's the concentration of each of the copper bromide which means that's the concentration of each ion. So we have uh, 2.0 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity for the copper and an equal amount of 2.0 times 10 to the negative fourth of the ion of the bromine. So it's as simple as that. You just multiply them together and you've got the KSP. So go ahead and do that math. Pause it, do the math, and come back and check with me. All right, so hopefully when you did that math and you multiplied it out, you got that the two of them together are uh, the concentration of the copper plus uh, one is equal to the concentration of the Br minus 1, and that's equal to 4 times 10 to the negative eighth, uh, and that has no units, so that's equal to the KSP. And that was pretty simple. All right, let's go on to a slightly harder one, and the reason it's harder is because it's not as straightforward. So you first thing you need to do is figure out the formula and do the same thing I did before, but make sure you take into account that it's basically going to be a Bi plus 3, and you have S minus 2. So in the formula, it's uh, 2 of those and 3 of those. So our equation is Bi 2S3 uh, is going to break apart and give us uh, Bi plus 3, 2 of those, plus S minus 2. Notice that I am not 3 of those, writing aqueous. So that's going to change how you do the math. So basically your KS, this is going to be, if this is um, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 15th, this is, and then what's going to happen is that's going to break apart and we're going to get uh, 1 times 10 to the negative uh, 15th, but there are two of them. And this is going to be 3 times the 1 times 10 to the negative 15th. So pause it and get those concentrations. Okay, great. So let's calculate KSP. We know that there's two of these, so we're going to have to square that. And if you did the math, you should have gotten 2 times 10 to the negative 15th. And we're going to square that. And then you should have gotten 3 times 10 to the negative 15th. These are negative. I didn't do a good job of writing that. And we're going to cube that. And that's because in the, in the equation, it would be um, Bi 
uh, squared times s negative 2 cubed. And that's what I had to do here when I did the math. So go ahead and do that math and see what you get. And so hopefully you've done that and uh, you've gotten that the KSP is equal to, that's a really, really small number, 1.1 1 .1 times 10 to the negative 73. No, you did not do it wrong. This stuff is basically no way ever going to dissolve because of that KSP. All right, let's do the last one. And um, again, same, same problem. Uh, you got to figure out the, the formula. And uh, if you look at it, it's copper iodide. There are three of them. So when it breaks apart, you're going to get one copper plus uh, two, excuse me, I wrote a three, two, uh, plus two IO3s. Okay, same thing. We know that if this is uh, one point uh, for every, the KSP is equal to the copper uh, times the IO3, and don't forget to square that. Now, in this time, we don't have that amount, but it's we have the KSP. Now, we do know from the equation that for every... Um, Let's say we have x of, of this, okay? We're going to get x of that, plus we're going to get 2x of that. So we're going to need those to solve this. So 1.4 times 10 to the negative 7th equals x. We don't know what that is. And then this is going to be 2x. And don't forget to square that in the formula. And if you do that, you will get that this is equal to uh, x. Uh, times uh, 4x squared. So yes, you're going to need your cubed root button here. And we're going to do that. And you're going to get that that is 4x cubed. And so let's do that math. So keep that in mind. We have that number and we have this number. So I'm going to erase that and rewrite it. All right, so I'm going to divide by 4 on both sides. And then that will get rid of uh, the 4. There we go. And I need to find my x. So that means I'm going to have to cube both sides, cube root both sides. So go ahead and do that. And you should then find out what x is. So pause it and do that. Okay, so hopefully you found that x is uh, 3.27 times 10 to the negative third molarity, and that's equal to your copper. Now, how would you get that so that you could find out what it is uh, for, if you needed your iodate concentration, you would then multiply this number by two and get that. And then the question then goes on and asks you, what is the grams per liter? This is going a little long, so I hope it'll load on YouTube. So this is the also the IO3 concentration, and this is how much will dissolve in water. So if we want to change this, remember this is moles per liter. So if we want to change this, this is how many moles we have that have dissolved in solution. So we just multiply by the molar mass, which is, I'll give it to you, it's 413.4 uh, grams. So if you multiply the moles by the grams, because we know that one mole equals that, you will get that the total amount that will dissolve in one liter and be in solution is only 1.35 grams. So I should have told you to pause it at that point, but check my math. So multiply these two together and moles cancels out, leaving me with grams per liter. So that's how much is in solution. Alrighty, well that brings us to the end of the first part of this lecture and only one more shorter section left.